sound preferences are. I like bass. I like, and if it can have quantity and quality, uh, yeah, I'm rocking it. Especially mid bass. I like the slam over the sub bass rumble. I like my mids super clean. I'm um, not a big fan of, of overly colored, overly thick, overly warm mids. Not a big fan of that. And highs that are very sweet and seem to be able to keep up without ever being overbearing or in your face. So. Stone Deaf Monk, welcome back to my channel. Flex in my new shirt. Thank you to Kyle from Canucks Audioholics. Today's vid, Let Shure's new planar, the S08. Now, this little planar is boasting some cool new tech, some talking points we're going to get into. Uh, but first, it uh, comes in this little box, comes in with their funky little rubberized plastic case. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys some fitment. Uh, on my set, I'm using the Osla crystal tips. Um, the SO8 is probably one of the most comfortable and lightest IMs I've ever tried just is so incredibly comfortable for my ears. I got medium size ears. I take a medium large uh, ear tip, uh, but man oh man, when they're there, I don't feel these things in my ear. Long listening sessions and the ability to play loud. Fun, fun time. This I am is gonna be under $100 for this planar. Comes with a modular cable. 3.5, 4.4, and it comes with these molded two pin ear hooks. Not my favorite cable, a little rubbery, a little tangly. Um, 
And I don't think it was the best pairing for this IM. Uh, though it is an SPC cable, I didn't find it um, SPC-like qualities. I didn't find it did anything to help the top end. Mine is sitting on a SPC graphene cable from Arty. Uh, really like this cable as well. And it looked pretty stellar on my silver S08s. They come in the, the two colors, the black and the silver. Um, it would have been really cool to see um, a yin and yang version of these as well. And you can also see the motif, the eight, same as the box. So Let Sure is celebrating eight years of uh, success and I wish them many, many more. Some talking points about the SO8. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the techie stuff, but there is some really cool stuff you should know about. Uh, this is one of their new 13 mil planar diaphragms. Uh, it is using a double magnet array assembly, and it's using something we haven't seen before called a PTR elastic film surrounds the diaphragm. And the whole thought process of that was to bring the extension down. And of course, uh, we'll get into some of the tuning that uh, Let Schuer did this on this uh, IM. How does all of the stuff, the new stuff, translate down? I guess that's always the million dollar question. Um, or is it actually an under $100 question because that's what this IAM's price point is going to be. I would describe the S08 in a nutshell. A warm, bassy planar with l the least planar-like planarness yet. With big booty bass quantity over quality and an overall warmer tonality with a relaxed top end and forward mids. Some observations before we get into sound and other stuff. The S08 is one of those IMs that mimic the source's input. So input equals output. I tried um, uh, many DAPs to test this development and so observed. Here's my synapsis. Shanling M5 Ultra. Uh, this is a warm sounding, resolving, slightly forward mids and big lush bass sound signature. The S08 sounded warmer, nicer, resolving mids, slightly forward and big lush bass. Shanling M8. As the above M5 Ultra, but with even warmer tonality when played on the M5 Ultra. How did the S08 sound? Well, exactly like that. Astel and Kern, uh, Con Max. Uh, slightly V-shaped sound, tighter bass, articulate, but for unforgivingly honest in the treble mids and slightly more laid back. The S08 was not as mid forward as the other sources. It was nicer textured bass. Sibilance was heard on a few tracks and the mids took on a drier tone. With the uh, Ibasso DX180, it uh, has a signature of tight bass, neutral mids, special sauce on the top end, enhancing details but not adding any extra energy. The S08, better detailed treble, great clarity in the mids, still mid forward in strange spots and only on certain songs. Tighter bass, uh, not as saturated as on a warmer source. The KN N3 Ultra, modern tube mode, analytical, resolving huge stage, deep bass, smooth top end with a slightly overall hint of warmth, just a hint. The S08 and that DAP in my ears lasted an entire one minute. It was a horrible pairing. I don't know what the dealy woe was, but uh, nope. 
on solid state mode, it actually sounded closer to the con. Ibasso DX90, clean, punchy, resolving, has a touch of ESS glare that works on some IMs. On the SO8, it made the treble a bit more resolving, but bass was too revealing in its flaws and sounded wrong. How about the Onyx Alpha? Well, I think that thing sounds organic. I think it sounds smooth, resolving, overall balanced, and kind of uncolored. The SO8 sounded mids less forward, smooth, bass was better textured, highs too smoothed over for my taste. So as sources go, I found the SO8 picked up a lot of the audio chain's tonal characteristics, incorporated that into its playback. Something to keep in mind when you're listening and reading impressions. Sources will make a huge difference in the overall tonality of the SO8 because it is quite transparent. Warmer gear made the SO8 sound really warm and thick and more resolving gear picked out the flaws in the SO8 easier and were less forgiving. Did I find perfect synergy with one source? Short answer, no. Uh, but the Ibasa was the best for my ears. It tightened up the bass. It helped the top end uh, treble. As you read and watch reviews, do, do, uh, do pay close attention to the sources used as this will greatly affect how the S08 sounded. And of course, as, the, as this hobby and listening impressions are nothing but subjective, each person will hear gear differently. Overall, the way I heard the S08 was that it presents a bit mid-forward, but unlike dynamic drivers, it didn't get shouty with the same kind of tuning. The S08 still suffered some sibilance on more revealing gear and less so on warmer sources. On warmer sources was where I found the lower mids to get too thick and the bass too saturated and boomy. Vocals do come through clear, but have a funny sheen to the trailing edges of the voice, especially female vocals. I felt the treble was pulled back too much to unplanar the SO8 and in turn missing some air and extension. Where the SO8 gives us a different tuning than I have yet to experience in all the planars I have tried, Somewhere between trying to be a clean mid-forward vocal set with a relaxed treble and bassy bottom end, but it left me wanting for more upper mids and top end to balance out the set. While this let sure planar can reproduce some impressive bass, borderline bass head level, that uh, does not sound like the early generations of planar that had no decay and too fast transients. This one's a bit different. Diaphragm surrounds coming into play here? I think so. Uh, on Poem of Chinese Drum by Hockman Yim, it was clear the SO8 can indeed pull down low, but the drum skin second and third order harmonics are missing. The SO8 suffers from the planar curse and is still too fast to allow a proper decay and subsequently don't reproduce the resonances required for an organic playback. It moves the air but doesn't produce the tonality required to make bass sound correct. This applies to piano, cello, guitar, kicks, six string instruments, that kind of stuff. But where you do get a sense of this as a planner driver is how cleanly the SO8 plays back the music with an extra sense of control, poise, and finesse. The dynamic drivers and balanced armatures don't quite do as well, or should I say differently, and also depending on your personal preferences. This mid-forwardness of the SO8 does kind of work. I think because of the resolving power of the SO8 and how effortlessly this IM produces vocals. Not entirely natural, but correct enough to be super engaging. Staging? Oh, well, I've always felt that this is one of the greatest weaknesses of planar and electrostatic drivers. There is a reason why in my media room, 
I have my acoustats sitting at a 45 degree angle and my listening chair is 10 feet back and directly centered. That is the only way I could get those electrostatics to stage properly. And when you do, it's magical. They actually just disappear. Um, but planar drivers and electrostatics are notorious for needing perfect placements to have a chance of imaging and stage. This translates down to headphones as well. Um, that is just one of the characteristics, in my opinion, of planar drivers. It's hard to present a 3D headspace. And in IMs, it seems to be harder than any other. So why? When people criticize planar IMs for their wide but very limited stage in depth and height, it doesn't come as a big surprise. We are placing them at the worst possible position on either side of our head and expect a different result. I don't care how different our brains perceive time alignment, planar IMs are at a disadvantage when it comes to 3D imaging, in my opinion. The SO8 is slightly different in most planars that I have heard in its stage. It does have fantastic width, but limited, if not non-existent depth and limited height. The SO8 does give you a better sense of height than some of the other planar IMs I have compared against, but I think it still fell, fell short against the nice HCK F1 Pro and the TRN Azure Dragon who both gave me more an enveloping stage experience. Doing some track impressions. I'm going to talk uh, about Frank. Steve Vai and his Ibanez string, six string guitar. Um, here is kind of how I heard uh, in a difference where doing a comparison to three different planars uh, and I want and they all have three different tunings the dragon for instance was missing the lower harmonics and weight the so8 was missing the upper bass um, and the dragon was light on this track but the top end was fantastic the f1 pro in comparison has the base of the so8 and the treble of the dragon that was kind of interesting and then i started uh doing a, a, a ranking, right? Uh, who was best in bass, treble, timbre, resolution? Where in a lot of these, the SO8 was either first or last. And the, in the bass department, for instance, it was first and the dragon was last. And it would flip-flop. In treble, the dragon was first and the SO8 would be last. And... The F1 Pro was kind of dead center for all of that. Bubbles. Now, Yoshi uh, Horikawa. I, I listened to this for staging and resolution. The SO8 here sounded super bassy. It was actually hard to focus on all the spatial effects. Uh, it did have great width, uh, average height, okay depth. The F1P had better height and depth, uh, overall more balanced replay, and more resolving. The Dragon, worst stage. Uh, compressed, uh, very intimate. You could perceive more information in the layering of the playback with the different balls, but the big balls didn't have the, the big balls didn't have the note weight for a realistic playback. And that was the difference between these three uh, I am. So the Dragon was bass shy, the SO8 was bass heavy, and the F1 Pro was kind of balanced. Some vocals like Cover Me in Sunshine from Pink. Uh, the F1 Pro uh, gets very shimmery up top. Uh, lots of sibilance. Vocals were thin and a bit unnatural. The SO8 vocals were smoother, uh, maybe a bit too warm. Nice top end, but uh, very bassy. Um, and kind of unbalanced. Um, I would still take this over the F1 Pro on this song. Um, the Dragon, the vocals were the best out of the three. Less planar spice, no sibilance, 
most balance on this bassy song. It was a weird mix of events uh, and how I heard these three. Climb on Board by Labyrinth, the SO8, uh, great for electrostatic music. Plays cleanly, goes loud uh, without any ear strain. And that was one of the strengths of the SO8. The Dragon uh, has better timber on vocals, sounds less forced, and a better replay, best micro details. The F1 Pro was the most natural vocals, though, out of the three. Um, it has that 8K kind of shimmer up top and can't play as the same volume as the SO8. So, again, sh the SO8 showing one of its strengths of, of playing electronic music like that and letting you kind of just dial it up and, and go loud. So, that's how just a couple track impressions. Uh, yes, I am being hugely critical of the SO8. And yet, the SO8 sound is strangely addictive. Just the way it presents music and sure lets you play loud. The SO8 is a conundrum in that it does and doesn't sound like a planar. Just to conclude, I would like to say that I think planar drivers are a wonderful technology and have the ability to be incredibly articulate and excel over dynamic drivers and balanced armatures in terms of lower distortion and the ability to reproduce music over an entire frequency range from the lowest 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz in a single driver. This is only bested by AMT drivers, air motion transducers, in my honest opinion. As each new generation of planar IAMs hit the market, it seems that manufacturers are trending to tune them against their nature, unplanar them. Why? Well, because the first generation of planars were larger, well, I think for IAM standards, not exactly an in-ear monitor when three quarters of it's sticking out, but that really wasn't the real issue. The real issue was how poorly tuned they were. Um, I think manufacturers thought, well, we'll just miniaturize a planar and stick that sucker in their ear and we're good to go. Nope. The early stuff really did sound wonky and unnatural, and that's being kind. Some of the planar sound characteristics include an unnatural metallic timber in its sound, giving away to a strange treble a lot of folks were not really taken with. Vocals and instrumentals sounded off because the mechanical nature of planar diaphragms and how fast they move affected the attack and decay and subsequently the secondary harmonics. The ability to move this diaphragm so quickly back and forth uh, with such low distortion can also be observed, though, as a huge positive. And given the planar's ability to reproduce instrumental with a hyper-realistic playback, the fast attack and quick de decay for the most part, also makes bass notes sound thin and lack depth and extension in the overall replay. And this is where Letsure is interjecting some new tech with that surround uh, technology. And I'm not familiar with it. I haven't seen a cutaway or any tech details of it, but something definitely is going on inside of that uh, to allow this dia diaphragm to get closer to dynamic driver sound-ish. Uh, in comparison, uh, why do a lot of people prefer the slower decay of dynamic drivers and the best balanced armatures? Well, I think the reason is, like me, I prefer a slower decay and add some weight to the notes, adding in texture to the music, making the bass more musical to my ears. These uh, latest generations of planar are getting very close to what dynamic drivers sound. 
uh, in the base department and yet uh, still be offer a up offer up a super clean and detailed mid-range and even come in cross as a warmer tuning. Top that off with some amazing treble extension and air, incredible resolution and details, all from a single driver. The S08 is one of those drivers that would seem to be able to do it all. The use of this new surround technology is definitely doing something different, something special. This new 13 millimeter driver might be the best rendition of this technology. Well, I think it's the first anyway. Delivering deep and powerful bass notes, clean mids, and lots of treble details without harshness, even at high volumes. Big butt coming in here. Back full circle. Uh, my feelings on the S08 are mixed. On one side, I feel the S08 gives great value and has some very redeeming traits. On the other side, I feel the S08 took the tuning too far the other way and lost a lot of the qualities that make planar drivers in their replay special. In Letchure's attempt to unplanar the S08 and make it sound more like conventional drivers, the tuning is altered to a point where truly it does not sound like a planar IM to me. Uh, and certainly not against the past generations. And here's my biggest takeaway from this set. The tuning also doesn't allow the S08 to play to planar strengths enough. Where is my hyper-realistic instrumental? It's peeking out, but not enough taste. Not enough for my taste. I want more. The bass is there. Big bass is there, but not the texture yet. It's getting closer and closer. The thing for me on the S08 was it was easy to hear how amazing this driver is and how capable it could be. The epiphany came as I EQ'd the S08 to my target curve and treated it like a single coherent point source driver that it is. A few things happened. The bottom end tightened up and became a lot less saturated and got rid of the bloat. The mid-range changed in that the overall tonality and timbre became a lot more natural and balanced. And lastly, the highs were not so muted and allowed this planar to do its planar thing, to allow it to really shine. I hope Letchure continues to develop this technology in this direction and fine-tune the tuning for a more balanced version. I'd love to hear that in a future model. For under $100, the S08 might be the most satisfying planar IEMs on the market for short bursts and fun for loud volumes. I think you should not try to critically listen to the S08, but just turn up the volume and enjoy the music. And if you do that, I think you will get huge enjoyment out of this planar IEM Overall, as a package for under $100, I think this whole planar thing is going in the right direction, and I'm excited for the future to see more. This is the Tone Deaf Monk. I'm out for now. Hello again. Before we get going, I just want to let you notice something. Oh, yes. 